Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for Persia starting as a jump for EU4 1.36 King of Kings. So Persia is a nation that doesn't actually exist in 1444 but it can be formed by many nations in and around the region of Persia itself. Of course for today's guide we're going to be going with Ajam right here because I do think it is probably the easiest and the most beginner friendly but of course let me know in the comments below if you want to see a separate guide for Ardabil right here of course the nation that historically formed Persia which is of course a lot more difficult than Ajam. Either way, starting as a jam, you're going to be taking care of the provinces that you need to form Persia in no time and forming them very, very soon. And even though a jam might be a lackluster start, according to some, because of their lack of missions right here, pretty much any other nation over here that needs to form Persia or that the game sort of wants you to form Persia as doesn't have a really strong mission tree or anything like that because you will be forming Persia super, super fast. Either way, there's no need to take a look at a jammy idea as we start off with plus 10% production efficiency and plus one diplomat, the only ones that will really use and of course we do start off as an ICTA right here a very good government reform we do have the unique ICTA taxation abilities and we do start off with two subjects Luristan and Ardalan and of course the Timurids have a bunch of cores on us but don't worry by playing as a jam you'll be conquering the provinces you need to form Persia super super fast from the Timurids and some other nations around you and you'll be pretty much forming them in no time and then we'll see what we do once we go ahead and actually form Persia so either way sit back relax and learn what you need to do as a jam to form Persia but first, a word from the sponsor of today's video, Star Trek Fleet Command. Remember when you were a kid, dreaming of exploring the stars? Well, now that dream can become a reality with Star Trek Fleet Command. This game is not just an MMO, it's a gateway to the entire Star Trek universe. From the next generation to Discovery, it's all here. The next generation content has also just landed new officers, new missions, and more. There's new officers like Luther Sloan, Riker, Dina. Each brings unique skills and depth to your gameplay. It's like stepping into the TV show. Wave Defense is also here, a whole new way to play. Defend against enemy waves with friends, and remember, collaboration is key. It's intense, strategic, and so rewarding. By the way, newcomers can use the promo code Warp Speed. You get a free content pack including epic shards of kirk this gives your fleet a significant boost to redeem it download the game from my link sign up for a scopely account then go to promo codes on the official website enter warp speed simple and rewarding in star trek fleet command you can build your fleet command ships like the uss enterprise and engage in epic battles forge alliances defeat enemies and expand your territory you can also customize your crew with characters like kirk spock Michael Burnham, and more. Each character adds a unique flavor to your gameplay. This game constantly evolves. New events and content are added monthly, keeping the universe fresh and exciting. There's always something new to discover. It's about community too though. You'll make friends, form alliances, and join forces with players from around the globe. It's a universe of camaraderie. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description or scan the QR code and download Star Trek Fleet Command for free today. Don't forget to use code WARPSPEED if you're a new player. Thank you to Star Trek Fleet Command for sponsoring today's video live long and prosper. All right, all right, here we are as a job. Now, if we right click on ourselves and go into the decisions and policies right here, we can see all the provinces that we need to form the nation of Persia. We do already own a bunch of them, but we do need to own the province of Yazd, which is right here. And then we need to own one of Amal or Shiraz and one of Tabriz, Kerman or Mashad. Either way, we're going to get Yazd and Kerman from the Timurids here pretty soon those are the two provinces right there and then the only province that we'll need is either Amal or Shiraz and of course we are going to be taking Amal from over here from Mazanjan although you could also take Shiraz from Fars depending on what happens in the independence war either way more on that later first of course you're going to adopt the title of Khalifa and enforce religious unity then you're going to go into your states and summon the diet you can pick whichever agenda is best for you then we're going to give the ulama religious state and a clerical advisory council along with religious diplomats and clerical education then we're going to give the emirs primacy of the emirs, increased levies, and aristocratic counselors along with strong duchies. And then we're going to give the merchant guilds land of commerce, patronage of the arts, commercial advisory board, and indebted to the merchant guilds. Then you can seize land. No privileges for the Dimi just yet. And of course, you might notice that we're Sunni. Don't convert these Shia provinces. Don't do anything regarding religion because we are going to become Shia when we form Persia later on either way. So no need to concern yourself with this right now. Either way, after you've completed the estate setup, you can also go ahead and use your government interactions right here. And I do recommend lenient taxation right at the start for less liberty desiring subjects and plus one diplo rep. This will help us accomplish some missions faster. Then it's time for some advisors. We aren't making that much money 
money right at the start as a jump, but we can still afford to hire three advisors. So get whichever level one admin advisor you want. I'm going to get this tax guy, then get a diplo rep or improve relations level one dip advisor. I do have this diplo rep guy, so I'm going to hire him and then get a morale discipline for defense or manpower level one mill advisor. I do have this morale guy, so I am going to hire him. And there we go. That's the advisors. Now we can go ahead and rearrange our army a little bit over here. What we're going to do is simply take one cavalry regiment and delete it. Then we're going to hire one infantry regiment and then we're also going to go ahead and hire the free company just like that. And now it's also time to get our relations in order. And what we want to do right here at the start to kickstart our game as a job and sort of start conquering the Timurids is to support the independence of the Timurid vassals. Now, you might be able to do Transoxiana right at the start since they're already disloyal. But then once Shah Rukh dies, you will be able to support these other guys or maybe even before that. So go into the production interface, click down here on diplomacy, and you can choose who to support independence on. And there we go. Transoxiana is immediately available. And we will, of course, do that right off the bat. The next thing you want to do right here according to this mission, Ajami leadership, is to insult or scornfully insult the Timurids. I do recommend sending them a scornful insult just like that. And there we go. Now we're able to take this mission as well, which gives us mill points, prestige, and claims on these provinces right here. Of course, we do need to conquer Kerman, so that's perfect. No need to build a spy network on the Timurids in order to get claims on those provinces. The next thing you can do right here is go ahead and set some rivals. I do recommend rivaling just the Timurids for now. Then you can also start spying on Mazandran, just like that. And then once these diplomats right here are back with one of them, you can start improving relations with your subjects, Ardalan and Luristan. And with the other one, you can start improving relations with the Ottomans or allying them or royal marrying them if you can do some of those things. I can royal marry them, so that's perfect. That's exactly what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to ally them. Now it's time to sit and wait, try to support other Timurid vassals' independence, and actually wait for them to declare the independence war. Something else we want to do is set at least these two provinces right here as provinces of interest. Really, this is the only thing we want in this initial war with the Timurids. We want to jump in, help these guys out, nab these provinces, peace out, and then we'll do our own thing. Right now, I also do recommend hiring a general with those free 60 mil points that we got, just like that. There we go. And at this point, you may also be able to take the mission built to force limit, which you should do. While you're waiting to start supporting the other Timurid vassals, make sure to place your armies down here in these provinces so you can immediately move to siege down the fort of Bam and siege down Yazd and Kerman as well. Now a couple of months have passed, I'm waiting to support some of these other guys. I've allied the Ottomans and also the Great Horde and Uzbek. The only really necessary alliance is the Ottomans, mainly so someone else doesn't declare on you, but you could get other allies if you want to, whichever ones you want to. Just make sure it's not someone real close in this region right here, since we're going to be fighting these guys. If you do manage to ally some of these guys up here that don't actually have feudalism, they may ask you to share it with them, in which case you will make some money. And this is precisely what we're waiting for, the death of Shah Rukh event. It always happens pretty early after the game starts. So after this, you should be able to support these other guys as independence as well. So that's exactly what you're going to do. You should go ahead and support Fars, Thistan, Afghanistan, and Khorasan as well. Don't worry that we're way over relations limit now. Now, pretty soon, some of these guys will declare their independence war. The most important thing you need to do is siege down these three provinces right here. This fort so you get war score, and then these two because we actually want to take them. After you build up a claim on Mazandran, you can start spying on the Timurids just so you get the sieges done a little bit faster. Around this point, you'll probably also be able to take the mission prepare for war after your main power has gone up. We gain additional morale of armies along with recover army morale speed and perma claims on other areas over here. And in my game, Transoxiana just declared the independence war. We're fighting the Timurids along with all of their vassals, well, except for Sistan. Sistan, it seems they've stayed loyal. And the Timurid ally right here is Dawasir. Usually the Timurids don't ally any other strong nations and they'll have some minor allies over in Arabia. Most likely Hormuz, even though it didn't happen in my game right here. Either way, once this war starts, you are not the main belligerent, keep in mind. And like I said earlier, what you want to do right here is siege down the fort in Bam and occupy these two provinces right here. So these three right here is your focus. After that, you can continue sieging, of course. Be careful so you don't run into any big Timurid stacks. I know that they're not right here because they just fought Ladakh, so they must still be over in this region. Now, while you're beating up the Timurids, you actually want to 
piece out yourself and not wait for these guys to call it because as you all know the ai isn't that competent some of these guys might not actually choose to break free they will probably not give you any land even if you've occupied a whole lot so you definitely want to go ahead and peace out yourself and if you go right here into the peace deal you need to check your own war score right here instead of the global war score so to say and once you have around 20 to 30 yourself you are good to go ahead and peace out and you can take just these two provinces right here that's really the only thing that's completely necessary in this first war right here but if you have more war score, you can definitely take more. I am not opposed to that. So what I would do right here with my 40-ish percent war score, and keep in mind, we could go a lot further. We could siege down their capital, but we're getting pretty close to some of these other guys piecing out. So that's why we want to control this ourselves. But after you take these two, you could also take the fort in Bam right here, for example. I'm also going to take this province since I have occupied it myself. And let's see, can I take Mogostan right here? A pretty good province that produces spices is a center of trade. Let's see. Yes, I can. But that's about it. I can't take any other provinces. So what I'm going to do is simply take like 40 ducats right here. And there we go. There's your first war with the Timurids done. You've gotten these two provinces for sure. And maybe something else if you wanted to. And that's great. That war is done. Now it's time to go back home, chill a little bit until we core these provinces up, and then declare our next war, which is going to be on whichever nation owns them all, most likely Mazandran. In my game, they've also expanded a little bit, which is great. This province is not only awesome for forming Persia, but all of these provinces right here are super, super valuable. They produce silk, they're grasslands, which means we can spawn the Renaissance over there, and this one is a center of trade as well. Very valuable provinces up here. While you're at peace, you can definitely turn off your forts and lower army maintenance to make some money. After you peace out here, whoever you allied from this war or whoever's independence you supported, they might break their alliance with you. In my case, Transoxiana did just that. Either way, no big deal. Completely normal. Once you've cored up all or almost all of the provinces that you took from the Timurids, it's time to once again declare our war. This is going to be our second war versus the nation of Mazandran right here. Usually they don't have strong allies. In my case, they don't have any allies. And the main goal in this war is, of course, to fall annex them. So simply declare for Amal or whichever other province you got to claim on, but it's most likely going to be Amal. And once your war with Mazandran is done, obviously you're going to go ahead and full annex them and take all of their money. And that's your second war done. Now you have all the necessary provinces to form Persia. All we need to do is first core up Amal and then we'll be forming Persia. Either way, during this point, you may be able to take some missions in the meantime, but we don't really care about these missions since we want to gain access to the Persian mission tree real quick. So simply go ahead and core up all those Amal provinces and you'll be forming Persia. When this decision pops up, convert religion to Shiite. If you have enough Shia provinces in your land, that's when it'll pop up. Don't do this. Now is not the time to flip to Shia just yet. And by the way, this is a Shia Persia playthrough, not Zoroastrian. That's a different guy. After the second war, the financial situation is already stable. I've paid off all my initial burger loans that helped us kickstart our game, and I'm back to making money. Don't take new burger loans just yet. Save them because we do need them to upgrade this center of trade that we conquered to level 2 before we dev it. And by the way, even if 10 years have passed and you're getting ready to annex Ardalan and Luristan, don't do it just yet. We do want to reconquer a little bit of their cores first. They do have cores on some provinces, as you can see. And after you core up the province of Amal, the decision to form the Persian nation will pop up, and obviously you're going to click it right away, and boom, just like that. Of course, we will take new traditions and ambitions, and now we are Persia. Awesome caller, awesome missions, awesome national ideas, and of course, you could establish the Iranian name, and your name will be changed to Iran. This is totally a flavor option, and you can do it if you want to. Either way, these are the Persian ideas starting off super, super powerful with plus 15% morale of armies and cavalry combat ability, finishing up with plus 10% recover army morale speed, all of them pretty insane, plus 15% national manpower, plus one Kizilbash max privileges, and I'll touch on what that is pretty soon, plus 10% goods produced, extremely strong, the discipline is insane, caravan power is really good as well for this inland-ish trade node area, plus 10% production efficiency and plus one yearly prestige, minus 5% dev cost and plus 15% manpower recovery speed and plus 15 15% national attacks as a finisher and obviously we're also the super powerful Persian government government type fixed dynasty enables the feudal theocracy abilities minus 5% dev cost another missionary missionary strength plus two tolerance of the true faith and plus 25% innovativeness gain insane all around and don't get me started on the missions just yet because we will be going down them very very soon 
And there we go, you're Persia, actually one of the most powerful nations in the game, super, super easily formed. Now, since the top part of this mission tree right here focuses on conquest and all of these, well, at least these two missions right here need us to conquer a bunch of things in order to advance, and this one right here requires us to dev our capital and improve it, the only mission we can really do right at the start is our religious direction right here, where we need to hire an inquisitor or a theologian in order to choose whether to go down the Muslim or Zoroastrian branches. So if you want to do it right away, go ahead and hire an inquisitor or a theologian. An inquisitor is a missionary strength guy and a theologian is a national unrest guy. I don't have any of them so I'm just gonna go ahead and fire these guys until I get some of them. Once again, we're still not flipping to Shia because we're waiting for an event. And there we go, I've finally gotten a theologian right here. I am gonna go ahead and hire him. And after you do the same, either him or a missionary strength guy, you will be able to take the Our Religious Direction mission, where we gain 50 admin points, and we can choose to either go down the Muslim or the Zoroastrian mission branches. Of course, since this is gonna be a Muslim, Shia specifically playthrough, we're not gonna be going with the Zoroastrian mission tree. So what I recommend taking is previewing the Shia mission tree right here. These are all the missions that we get from it. So for this specific playthrough, for this specific guide, these are the ones you need to choose, the Shia missions. After that, you can select the current mission branch. And there we go. Now we'll also gain this event, Persian Shiism, where Shia will become the new state religion of Persia. We lose one stab instead of two, and that decision loses you two stab, by the way, and obviously we gain some other modifiers as well. And just like that, our capital will become a Shia center of conversion and will unlock another holy order. Of course, then you can choose your new school right here. I do recommend going for the plus 10% shock damage. And just like that, we're Shia. Now you can also go ahead and enforce religious unity and you can start converting the Sunni provinces. After you start converting, I do recommend going back into the ulama right here and giving them enforced unity of faith as well for even more missionary strength. And you might have noticed that the new estate, the Kizilbash right here popped up, which is a special type of Shia warrior, so to say. But don't give them anything just yet. We really don't need to. We'll be dealing with these guys later. Something else you're going to do after you form Persia is go ahead and go into the state of Tabaristan right here and make it a full state and full core everything right there. Do this only after you've gotten tech 4 in every category though. Then what you want to do is activate the Encourage Development State Edict right here as well. And now you can go ahead and take your new burger loans just like that. And now what you want to do is upgrade the Center of Trade in Sari up to level 2 to make this province even cheaper to dev. And then go ahead and bump it up to 15, expand infrastructure and now we're going to start deving for the renaissance in this province right here. With the extra money you got from the burger loans, you can also start building marketplaces and all the center of trade, estuary, and possibly silk provinces. After you form Persia and started deving the renaissance right here, we can go ahead and continue with our wars because we do have various claims around us, and you're simply going to look to fight whichever of your neighbors is the easiest to fight. In my game right here, obviously I have truces with all of these guys on this side, the Timurid guys, so I could go ahead and fight Biapas. Actually, fighting them would be pretty annoying. Let's take a look at Mushasha right here. Ah, QQ won't help them because they are getting beaten up by the Mamluks. So, declaring whichever of your neighbors looks to be the easiest to fight. I'm going to declare a little reconquest for Shustar right here, Luristan's core on Mushasha, but I'm also going to go ahead and full annex them. And there we go. Pretty simple. You will be getting this event pretty often as pretty much any Muslim nation right here. Obviously, the first option right here is mainly to gain corruption. And then the second option right here is to lose corruption. Obviously, you don't want to get minus 10 percent tax or plus 0.01 yearly corruption. So you're always going to be taking this. But before you take this, what you want to go ahead and do is go into your economy tab right here. Debase currency that gives us two corruption. But after that, simply lose the two corruption. It's pretty much free money. For your tier 2 government reform for now, obviously you want to maximize the strength of your army even more. The Amirs aren't that influential, so we can totally go with strength and noble privileges. There's even more manpower. At this point, you can also look to improve relations with whoever you need to in order to invite the Hanbali scholar for minus 10% aggressive expansion impact. In my game, let's see right here, that is Oman. So I am going to improve with Oman a little bit. And there we go, Mushasha has unconditionally surrendered. If they look just like this in your game as well, obviously you're going to give the core to Luristan, back to Luristan, or you're going to give it back to them from whoever you're fighting over here, and then you can take the rest for yourself. That's exactly what I'm going to do, along with all of their money. And there we go, that's my next war done. Really, the order of who you fight after you fight the Timurids and Mazandran right here really doesn't matter. It's whoever is the easiest to fight. This would be a perfect opportunity to jump on QQ as well, or maybe be up us right here. <laughs> or maybe still no. At this point, I've also dev sorry enough in order to force spawn the Renaissance. Now that I've gotten to 150 relations with Oman, basically by allying them and doing a bunch of things to get their opinion of us up, 
I am gonna invite the Hanbali Scholar for less aggressive expansion. Once you've cored up the provinces from your next war, you can continue with your next next war by once again fighting whichever one of your neighbors you think is the weakest. In my game right here, QQ just got beaten up by the Mamluks, they're pretty low on the amount of troops and on manpower as well, they don't have strong allies, it's just Imereti, so this is the perfect time to strike on them. Sometimes the Ottomans will be willing to help you out versus QQ if they're more powerful than this or if they start bordering each other, but either way, bide your time, take care of the smaller nations around you if you still can't fight QQ just yet. Either way, when you do fight QQ, once again declare a reconquest for one of your subjects' scores because Ardalan does have cores on these two provinces and Luristan has a core on this province right here. So I'm just gonna declare a reconquest for Ilam right here. I am gonna call in the Great Horde, why not? Let's get this done faster. And there we go. There's my next war started. In this war versus QQ right here, we're gonna focus on taking a province or two over in this region to release Iraq from and then reconquer their cores in the next war while also primarily focusing on taking provinces for ourselves up here. And like I said, once you defeat Karakuyunlu, make sure to take a province or two down here that you can release Iraq from, that's this province for me right here, then give your cores back to your existing subjects, Ardalan and Luristan, which are these three provinces right here, and after you do this, Focus on taking these provinces right here that you have claims on from your missions, which in my game are these provinces right here. You may think it's a lot of aggressive expansion, but it's not really that much. They're another Shia nation, these other guys around us, none of them are Shia, so even though it is a 62 aggressive expansion and some of these guys will be mad, it's not enough to trigger a coalition or anything. So a province to release Iraq, your subjects to scores back, and then your claims up here. And that's your first war with QQ done. Now it's time to chill for two or three or four years maybe and work on improving our nation economically. Of course, do go ahead and release Iraq. There we go. There's Iraq. These are their cores that we can reconquer. Quite a lot. After you give all of Ardalan and Luristan's cores back from the nations around them, you can go ahead and annex these guys. Make sure to of course give the emirs the integration policy prior to that. There we go, just like that, so we don't lose any diplorep, and I'm gonna start annexing Luristan. Once you hit Admin Tech 5, it will be time for your first idea group, and for your first idea group as Persia, I do recommend picking up a military-related idea group, such as perhaps offensive quality or even quantity, which will be needed quite a lot more than you think. Offensive, obviously, you already know why it's great for all the bonuses it gives to our generals, the siege ability, and the discipline as well. Then quality is pretty nice for the combat ability, the additional combat ability that we're gonna get, of course, we already have some. And then quantity is super needed as well, because this is a region where you do take a lot of attrition. There are so many forts, there are so many mountains, so many drylands and barren provinces like that, that do give us a lot of attrition. So all of the bonuses, the national manpower plus 33%, the land force limit, and all of these other bonuses right here are super super strong and they will mesh very very well with other idea groups that we'll be taking later down the line such as religious most importantly which we're going to be taking for our second one we gain another 10% morale armies and even more recover army morale speed and then of course it meshes really well with some money making idea groups that we're going to be taking such as trade for another plus 15% goods produced along with the plus 10% that we already have from our national ideas so quantity even though it may really not be up to the level of offensive and quality it is definitely very needed and it will give us some amazing policies later down the line so that's why i recommend it most although you could go with offensive or quality as well if you don't really play with mill idea groups then i do recommend opening up with diplo after this you can start focusing on mill around the 1460s make sure to lower autonomy as well this will help us out quite a lot with the whole making money and manpower situation we've got going on definitely do this every 10 or 15 years. Now I've also just started annexing Ardalan since I have good enough relations with them as well. Now that a little bit of time has passed, I will be declaring my next war. It is going to be versus the Timurids right here, even though they're allied to the super annoying nation of Chagatai, they're actually one of the easiest neighbors that I can fight. So simply continue your wars by declaring on whoever you think is the easiest. And of course, once your truce runs out with QQ, definitely make sure to fight them to reconquer Iraq's cores. That may have been your next war if you've been chilling for quite a while. If not, fight whoever. So, like I said, there's my declaration on the Timurids. I'm simply going to declare for this province right here, since it's pretty close and I'm going to siege it down pretty fast. And there we go. And now that my war with the Timurids is finally done, it wasn't annoying, it was just pretty long because I had the piece out Chagatai, this is what I'm going to be taking from them, which is all of this that they own right here, and that's almost full annexing them except for these two provinces right here that I can't reach. 
Whenever you're fighting someone over here in this region that you have claims on, it, the Timurids, if they're big, Transoxiana, they're usually big as well. Take as much as you can or as much as you're comfortable with. Look to take around 50-ish aggressive expansion. That's almost 60 for me, but either way, I'll still be taking all of this right here. And there we go. There's even more expansion into the Timurids. Now, while I was in this war, I also annexed my subject Arlan right here, which enabled me to take this mission right here, Consolidate Persia. You will be able to take this mission eventually after you do your expanding as well. We need to own 35 provinces in the region of Persia for that and there we go I have about 40 and when we take this we get a nice event right here where we gain 32 development spread across several provinces in the region of Persia and we also gain further permaclaims in the Caucasus along with reform progress and there we go very nice for your first age ability you should of course take justified wars at either point in the game you can start working on this mission right here it's nothing super super important that we need to get done extremely fast but it's still nice to do so just activate encourage development in Iraq and Ajam right here just like that. Something else you can do is invite minorities from abroad which will give you a minus 20% dev discount in your capital state just like that. So there we go. Even though it's drylands right here you will be able to make it pretty cheap to dev especially if you bump it up once and then expand infrastructure as well. So dev it up 10 times and build the relevant buildings. By the way these are the claims that we got from that initial mission right here in the southern Caucasus. And remember always keep taking new burger loans. Of course whenever you get the event prospering times make sure to select the second option right here for plus 25% local trade power in the province it pretty much creates a level 3 center of trade. As we can see if we want to build a marketplace right there the gain is massive. Of course the Ottomans may end up calling you in to fight the Mamluks at this point you may not border them yourself in my game I do since they expanded down here and they actually fought QQ which is not something that happens too often. Of course you're going to want to set some provinces of interest right here hoping that the Ottomans give you some stuff or if this doesn't end up happening if they don't call you in you could declare on them at the same time of course if you do border them. Once you develop your capital and build all of the relevant buildings, I just did it in my case since I just unlocked the workshop, of course you will take the patronage of the arts mission, you gain prestige along with a skill 3 artist who's 75% cheaper. And there we go, just like that, that mission is done. This wasn't too relevant. What is relevant however is this mission right here which is super super powerful. Now we won't be unlocking it that soon since we do need to expand quite a lot for it, but you do need to keep it in mind. The legacy of Timur mission is extremely extremely powerful because it will give us the legacy of Timur tier 2 government reform along with those awesome bonuses down there so it's super powerful remember it when you get the 200 provinces either way that's it for over here for now these next missions all of them focus on conquest either way for tier 3 government reform i recommend centralized monarchical bureaucracy or expand a royal court i'm gonna go with expand a royal court myself there we go the ottomans finished their war with the memlooks and i in fact did not get anything oh well no big deal we are going to be fighting them later on as well another mission i can take right now is the persian influence which happens when you get to your tier 3 government reform you should definitely go ahead and take it because it does unlock and enact the tier 3 government reform court of art and culture which enables the persian influence ability along with prestige decay advisors and culture conversion cost there we go just like that you can unlock it and not take it and gain reform progress or you can unlock it and take it and there we go there's that reform court of art and culture and this is pretty much the persian influence ability right here i'm going to show it off on someone like biapas for example you can invite them to your sphere of influence if they are shia for example as we can see we can do it on qq but they wouldn't accept and then you can promote our culture basically spend persian influence to change their primary culture to ours to persian this is meant to be done on sort of minor nations around you if there even are any shia ones so that's pretty much that ability right there a cool and unique way to play as persia although i don't think you will be utilizing it too much of course i took it right here to show it off but if you don't think you'll be using it that much you could stick with one of these two right here there was an option to not immediately change to it from your event of course when you do unlock the workshops make sure to start building them immediately in all the high value trade good provinces as we can see qq is actually requesting to join our sphere of cultural influence of course we're not going to accept that because we do want to fight them and that's exactly what i'm going to do now declare on qq to reconquer some of iraq's cores such as mosul for example and then take additional provinces up here that we have claims on they don't even have any allies just gazi kumuk who won't even help them out and this very easy war is done. What I'm going to do is take these two provinces for myself, give these three cores back to Iraq, and then I'm going to take some provinces up here that I have claims on. Let's see if we can actually take everything. And yes, we can. Well, almost, because this one province is actually occupied by AQ, which is really not a big deal. So there we go. There's my second war with QQ done. If no one else fights them, you should be able to wrap these guys up in about three wars. Someone else did fight them in my game, so that's why I'm pretty much done with them. And there we go. That's that.
After you completely kick out QQ out of the region of Persia, or after you full annex them, you will be able to take the mission Butcher the Black Sheep, where we gain a permaclaim on every Kurdish province in Anatolia, the Mashriq, and Persia. And if we make QQ exist, but not in Persia or the Caucasus, we also gain admin points. There we go. These are some of the claims we've gotten. Additionally, if you already own eight Kurdish culture provinces, you'll be able to take the mission Protect the West Iranian, where you gain a permaclaim on the entirety of the Mashriq, and we lose a bunch of separatism in a bunch of provinces that we already own. These are the provinces we got claims on. In between fighting bigger nations or bigger targets, focus on taking out the smaller nations that are left over here. Right now, for example, I'm going to declare on Biapas. They're just two provinces large, so it's going to be super, super simple. The Timurids, they're super small, so is Gazikumuk. Very easy war. And now Biapas has unconditionally surrendered. Obviously, I'm going to full annex them. Once you hit Admin Tech 7, it will be time for your second idea group. And obviously, as a Shia nation, since there aren't that many around the world and everything around us isn't Shia either, and obviously we want it to mesh really well with our national ideas, our missions, our government reforms, the type of nation we are, we are going to be going with religious ideas. Super, super strong for conversion and stability all around. This CB at the end is super powerful as well when we unlock it, and the policies that we're going to get with it are really good as well. So after you took quantity, or maybe even offensive quality or diplo, either way, it is time for religious ideas for your second idea group. Now that we've chilled a little bit, I am going to continue with my conquest by fighting the nation of Fars, someone which you should have looked to take out as early as possible. Either way, in my game, I really just didn't have the opportunity based on their alliances. But I do now, so I'm going to declare for Shiraz right here, call in Oman, because why not? And there we go. Probably just going to white piece Afghanistan or take some money. And now that I defeated Fars, I will be full annexing them, depending on how large they are or whoever is here, take as much as you can. And there we go. That's my war with them. Done. Either way, super valuable and important provinces to take, definitely do it. Now to show off the Persian influence ability a little bit as Shia Persia, and I do think by the way that this is the most powerful as Sunni Persia, which you wouldn't really be playing, you'd probably be going Shia or Zoroastrian, but there's another reason to go Sunni along with those missions as well. Let me show it off on Ghazi Kumuk right here, who I force converted to Shia in my war with Biapas right here. So first I'm going to invite them into my sphere of influence, and there we go, now they're basically a cultural influenced state of Persia, and they're sort of like a subject but not really because if you want to declare on someone they don't actually end up joining they're sort of like a scootaged vassal uh or something like that but either way after you do this after you gain more persian influence right here you could promote our culture to actually make them you know want to become persian and then you could also select elevate influenced state right here although you do need to wait for them to get persian as their primary culture and then that basically will make them into a vassal. Like I said, this isn't that powerful as Shia Persia because there aren't really Shia nations around the world, at least not that much. But if you do end up going as Sunni Persia, you can get pretty much all of Arabia for free right here by doing all of these interactions. It's pretty slow, but it's also a nice alternate route of expansion. And this is the Persian influence right here, by the way. I didn't really touch on this, but that's how much we gain. We gain them based on promote art decisions, we gain additional levels for artists and philosophers, and we do lose them based on non-accepted cultures. So that's why so many of these missions right here give us accepted cultures, like this one right here, which will accept Georgian and Armenian, then this one accepts Turkish, and so on and so on. Either way, now that all of that is done and aggressive expansion is still chill, I'm going to be declaring on Shirvan right here because we do have claims on their provinces. Now, while I'm in this war right here, I'm also fighting AQ, who was a Shirvan ally. Now, what I'm going to do in this war is take the province of Raqqa right here, which is pretty important because it is a Syrian core. And we do want to get a Syrian core province sooner or later in order to release the nation of Syria from. You're most likely going to do this when you fight QQ or the Mamluks, depending on which provinces they own over here. However, in my game, I'm doing it to AQ right there. So whenever you have the opportunity to do so, make sure to take a province that you can release Syria from. Now that my war with Shirvan is done, obviously I'll be full annexing them. And there we go. And of course, like I said earlier, I will be releasing Syria. And there we go, just like that. There's a bunch of cores we can reconquer from the Mamluks and from the Ottomans, of course. Now, QQ just offered to sell me a province, and they sold me this province right here. Obviously, whenever someone offers to sell you a province, definitely go ahead and accept it. And now that my truce with the Mamluks is up, I'll be declaring on them in order to reconquer these Iraqi cores and these Syrian cores as well. You would be doing the Syrian reconquest from them or the Ottomans, or, and the Iraqi reconquest from them or from QQ, depending on what the game looks like in your situation. Either way, there's a reconquest for Baghdad. After the Mamluks have been beaten by the Ottomans, you can definitely take them on by yourself. If the Mamluks are still in their original position or if they've expanded, you might need help. 
And now that my war with the Mamluks is pretty much done, what I'm going to be doing is giving Iraq all of their cores back and Syria all of their cores back, and then I'm going to be taking some other provinces that I can, because it's really not that much aggressive expansion since it's all reconquest. So there we go, these are all the provinces that I can take in this war, that's what I'm going to do, only 41 aggressive expansion, not bad at all. And there's my first war with the Mamluks done. Depending on the situation in your game, you may have expanded more over here, more over here, depending on your opportunity. Either way, once you conquer a certain amount of provinces in the Mashriq region, you will be able to take the mission Unite the Mashriq, where we gain Mashriki and Syrian as an accepted culture, along with perma claims on the entirety of Egypt. As we can see, lots of missions give us accepted cultures, which is excellent. And there we go, these are the further claims that we've received. Once you expand over in this region a little bit, that may worsen your relations with the Ottomans, but it's completely expected you'll end up fighting them either way sooner or later. It would have been nice if I could have prevented their expansion over here, but unfortunately I didn't do that in my game. Hopefully in your game, you can take a bunch of provinces here to stop the Ottomans from going further south. Either way, in my game, they're going to be declaring on the Mamluks once again, and they might even turn them into an ALN, which is a problem for later down the line. I didn't forget to mention that I also took this province from Hormuz when I pieced them out earlier. Once you've given Iraq or Syria all of their cores back, you're of course free to annex them once you get relations up. Whenever you notice that you're making quite a lot of money and that you would be able to sustain another exact same size stack as the one you have right now, in my game it's a 2447, as you can see it's costing me about 12 and a half ducats a month, which means I can totally get another stack and still make about 12 ducats a month, which is perfect. So what I'm going to do right here is go into the templates right here, create a template that is the exact same size as my army right now just like that 2447 and i am gonna take out a loan or two in order to construct it right here there we go of course as persia since we do have pretty nice combat ability especially later on if you do end up getting more from quality ideas or something like that you would want to increase the cavalry size in your army but for now four is enough later if you get like 20 percent 30 percent cap combat ability you could bump it up to six eight or even 12. And once your army is larger than 40k, which would probably happen around this time unless you also have some mercenary companies around, you will be able to take the mission Rally the Warriors, which gives us a general with 80 tradition and with two additional shock pips. So you know that this general is going to be extremely powerful. 4-6 in my game, super strong. You might want to save this mission until you get to fight the Ottomans so you can use that general, but I of course took it to show it off. Now whatever you want to, you can give the Kizilbash right here the unique estate, the establish the Kizilbash regiments privilege which of course will allow you to recruit those guys you can get them as infantry or cavalry they are decent they're not super powerful like some other unique regiments for example the Swedish or the Spanish guys but they are pretty good they're 25% cheaper to maintain and they gain 5% less fire damage received which is actually pretty good another thing you can do after you take this establish the Kizilbash regiments you can also expand them take this over here protected communities that will increase it even more however we won't be able to culture convert the Turkish, Turkmeni, Azerbaijani, or Turco-Iranian cultures, which isn't really a problem. We're not, probably not going to be doing that either way. And then, of course, something else you should definitely do is Kizilbash leadership for the army tradition decay and the general discount if you want to as well. So those are some that you could be taking. This is pretty much the basic one that unlocks them. For your tier 4 government reform, no matter which playthrough you're going with, Sunni Shia or Zoroastrian, you definitely want to go with strength into Ulama. Of course, especially strong for Shia because it does give us plus 1.5% missionary strength always keep lowering autonomy i've just done it in all of the red provinces that you see on the map right now and i'm doing it in some more now i'm going to be declaring on aq right here a very nice opportunistic war because i can notice that their ally the ottomans won't help them out which is perfect they do own provinces in the caucasus and in the mashriq that we need to take and of course if we expand into them later the ottomans if they ever break their alliance with them they can't expand into them i'm already bordering the ottomans they already slightly dislike me and in fact i'm not even allied to them for some reason but either way there's my declaration on AQ. And now that I've defeated AQ, I'll actually be full annexing them. There we go, just like that. And that's that problem dealt with. You might not be expanding over in this region in your game yourself if the Ottomans are allied to them, if you can't fight an opportunity like this, but if you can go this way, definitely go. However, if not, you're going to be focusing on your claims. Of course, when colonialism spawns, make sure to start deving it as well when you start maxing out on your points right here. There are a lot of chief provinces to dev it in, and even though our capital right here is up to 23 development, it's still super, super cheap due to all the modifiers that we have in it. 
Although if you do it in your capital, you will need to push it up to around 50. So look for a province. And by around the time colonialism spawns, your realm should look a little something like this. Basically, we start off as a jam and started off by supporting the Timurid vassals. And then when they declared their independence, the provinces that we needed to took were these two because we needed them to form Persia. And of course, if you could have taken more, then you definitely should have taken more, just like I took a couple of more provinces. After that, you fought Mazandran in order to get the province of Amal and full annex them very valuable provinces, not just for the formation of Persia and then after you poured up those provinces that we took in our initial two wars you should have gone ahead and formed the nation of Persia which of course gave us this super powerful tier 1 government reform later on we're going to be getting a super powerful tier 2 one as well we got this tier 3 one which is decent to say the least maybe not that useful if you're playing Shia but definitely take it if you're going Sunni and then after those two initial wars you should have pretty much continued to expand in every single direction around you in all of the provinces that we get claims on because according to this top part of the mission tree here we gain claims on massive massive amounts of provinces and you should have expanded wherever you could have pretty much taking care of the easiest nations that you could have fought i fought some minor nations over here around me didn't expand too much into the timurids and their previous vassals due to some alliance situations but of course during this point in the game it is more beneficial to head towards india rather than towards this way but that's the opportunities that i had myself so after forming persia you should have expanded in every single direction around you fighting the easiest nations that you can eventually when you fought qq taking provinces to release iraq from when you fought aq qq or the mamluks taking provinces to release syria from giving your subjects their course back down here giving syria and iraq their course back over here and pretty much all the time expanding in the regions that we've gotten claims on from these missions right here in order to gain all of those awesome promoted cultures we got a lot of accepted cultures from our missions as we can see we already got mashriki kurdish right here later on we're going to be getting some more so an awesome awesome mission tree all around especially this top part right here you should of course focus on completing the patronage of the arts mission so later on once you grow larger you could complete the legacy of timur mission obviously i can't show that off in my game right here because i would need to be twice the size that i am right now but it's super powerful definitely go with that tier two government reform these missions right here take us towards india these missions right here focus on us building ramparts in certain provinces so we gain major defensiveness not too relevant i guess but it is pretty cool for role play type situations and of course these missions over here take us towards anatolia towards egypt towards the Mashriq, towards the balkans and there are some very nice missions down here which don't just give us perma claims and stuff like that of course this bottom branch right here obviously focuses on the religion and development and subjugation and stuff like that definitely focus on these as well they give us some very very nice modifiers and this one right here is pretty much the economic branch of the mission tree which you do need to have four thousand ducats and no inflation in order to kickstart you could do it with loans of course as well but definitely do this whenever one you want to this is sort of a focus for later on as well although you could do it earlier on as well either way the most important part of the mission tree is right here and right here the conquest missions which give us perma claims either way like i said by this point you should look a little something like this some of you may have expanded more into the persia super region like i said it is better to go towards india rather than towards this way but do it whichever way you can fight your smaller neighbors whenever you can before focusing on the big ones of course so maybe you hit qq fight a couple of small guys fight someone big over here like transoxiana fight a couple of small guys fight the mamluks fight a couple of small guys of course before you grow on to become more powerful than the ottomans before you take them on because as persia and sort of a regular playthrough you should look to own everything from the balkans to bengal basically this region right here these regions the balkans anatolia egypt arabia the mashriq caucasus persia khorasan all the indian regions as well this is sort of the region that you should focus on expanding in and that's pretty much the region you are going to focus on expanding in now of course this region is not that rich at the start but the trade goods that are positioned over in persia and in khorasan and in india especially later on make this region super powerful for developing for building buildings and stuff like that so even though you won't start out that rich you will rapidly go on to become super super successful this is how much i'm making right now at about this point in the game as we can see not too much from trade or from production the percentage right here is pretty low but that's of course due to our position in these trade nodes right here later on when you're going to expand into the ottomans you are going to make constantinople your main trade node and by controlling ragusa as well you'll make it pretty much an end node and then all of this trade right here will route it all over to constantinople which will make it super super powerful and of course by this point you shouldn't have only been expanding through warfare or through vassalizing nations and stuff like that you should have definitely worked on improving your nation economically as well i'm going to show the buildings that i've built in my campaign and you should look to have built something similar these are all the marketplaces and all the center of trade and estuary provinces and even some silk producing provinces if it does give me more than a two increase right here as we can see a bunch of workshops as well in the high value trade good provinces i still have a whole lot left to build 
and of course a bunch of churches as well and when you hit admin tech 8 which i haven't in my game yet because i am already struggling with governing capacity i will of course start constructing courthouses immediately it is something that you need to do as well when you hit admin tech 8 build them in every single province governing capacity will become a problem sooner rather than later so that's about what i built you should have looked to build something similar i did upgrade a couple of centers of trade to level two even though i wasn't focusing on that that much and this is what my armies are looking like right now two stacks comprised of 24 4 7 pretty good for this combat with right here but like i said earlier you will want to bump up the numbers of cavalry later on if you do gain more cavalry combat ability right now it's four but you could take it all the way up 12 or depending on the cavalry to infantry ratio and the modifiers that you get you could build it up to a whole lot more the choice is totally up to you and of course you should have been converting quite a lot our missionary strength is good this center of conversion right here is pretty strong as well you won't really be struggling with converting and stuff like that although it will take quite a while since there is pretty much everything that we conquer to convert there are so few shia provinces and of course we will be doing that all the time my missionaries are automatic missionary strength is pretty decent by this point in the game and i am converting everything of course there's lots of great projects that you can utilize over in this region as well the only ones over here that you can't really utilize are this coptic one right here and then this zoroastrian one right here the bakwa teshga but pretty much everything else over here in this region you can definitely use as a shia nation some of you do require to convert those provinces first of course but you will be utilizing them either way and that's about what you should look like as persia by the point colonialism spawns either way after this point you're going to continue to expand in the same regions we've already been expanding in basically following along our claims right here like i said everything from the balkans over to india is what you should focus on i still haven't got my claims this way yet because i haven't taken this mission yet which requires us to own 24 provinces in the khorasan region of course eventually you will get to that some of you have already expanded into india even by this point if alliances were easier in this direction rather than this direction like i said it is better to go this way and you'll continue to follow along with that basically shifting your expansion opportunities from one culture group to another maybe hit the arabian guys then the caucasian guys then some of the indian guys of course moving to different religious as well sunni coptic orthodox you got right here hindu and the other dharmic religions over in india so you will definitely not have a major problem with aggressive expansion when you focus your expansion opportunities in different areas all the time don't keep hitting the same guys over and over that's how you get coalitioned fight a little bit here a little bit there you already know the drill by now this is what we took for our first two idea groups quantity i took for my first one either way if you went quantity quality offensive or diplo for your first one doesn't matter religious for your second one after taking one of those for your first one i recommend another mill idea group to keep improving our army for our third one so whichever one you didn't take earlier is one you should take now i took quantity so i'm left with offensive and quality i would go with either one of these for my third one and then for your fourth one you could focus on a money making idea group such as trade a very 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 useful for this region over here we're going to be controlling a lot of trade nodes and routing all of it to constantinople and of course the policies that trade has with all of the ones we already have are super super great such as 15 percent goods produced with quantity and another 10 percent goods produced with religious along with the missionary string so super super nice trade right here for your fourth one after you've already taken quantity and religious what i would do in my game is quantity religious quality trade as you can see the policies with quality are really nice as well we got siege ability and morale damage with religious and a trade efficiency with trade so super super nice that's what i would do quantity religious quality trade although the choices are totally up to you after that you can do whatever you want depending on your goals this is what we took for our first four government reforms like i said for tier two you could go with one of these right here if you're not gonna play with this too heavily and i actually don't recommend this one too much for shia playthroughs like i said it's more suited for sunni playthroughs so these for your first two later you're gonna swap to timber's legacy for tier two strengthen the ulema for tier four this one is unique and really really nice for tier five i actually do recommend this one quite a lot for tier six you can go with aristocratic court if you're playing with subjects if not royal decree when absolutism comes around for tier seven meritocratic recruitment for tier eight you can empower the burgers or embrace the economic theory the choice is totally up to you for tier nine take the six books of the republic or the social contract if you're tired of converting and by the way i do recommend converting everything don't give religious to the demi either just convert every single province you conquer and then for tier 10 and tier 11 all of them are really good take whichever one you want at that point in the game you won't make a mistake with either one of them and like i said by the time colonialism spawns your realm should look a little something like this if you're not that confident in your abilities or if you're not sure if your game is gonna go like mine this save file is available for all youtube members in the save games discord channel and you can continue playing as persia from this date forward let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that i should do a guide on if you enjoyed this video don't hesitate to leave a like it really helps out a lot and if you like the content and want to see more videos like this make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of them and you can become a member today and join the discord the link is in the description thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time with another eu4 video